Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be installing Pi-hole. What Pi-hole is, it's a network-wide ad blocker, so instead of just blocking ads in your browser, it runs as a DNS server for your entire network. What that means is any devices connected to your network will have all the ads, trackers, any malicious things blocked before they even load. Think of it as a filter that cleans up all your internet traffic before it reaches your device. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Here we are on the documentation page. When in doubt, always revert back to the documentation if you get confused on a step. Here's the command that we're going to copy and paste into our terminal. So let's copy and paste that and start with the install process. I'm SSH into the Pi-hole server via our Kali Linux machine. We're going to run this command and it's going to start the install process for us. On this screen here, it's asking us if our Pi-hole server has a static IP address. Just for the demonstration purpose of this video, we don't have a static IP address for it, but in a actual live production setting, it's recommended that you do have a static IP for this. On this screen here, Pi-hole is asking us which upstream DNS provider we want to use. What this means is when Pi-hole blocks an ad, for example, that request still has to go somewhere for it to look up those domain names. That's what a DNS upstream is. For this, we're going to go ahead and pick Cloudflare. That's popular when it comes to privacy. Right here, it's asking us if we want to use Stephen Black's list and go ahead and select yes. This is just the standard block list that Pi-hole typically uses. We're going to go ahead and select Enable Logging. For this screen right here, it's asking us how we want to do our privacy settings for Pi-hole. For this, we're going to pick Hide Domains and Clients. And what this does is it hides both the sites and the devices making those requests to set sites. And finally, we're going to let the install process do its thing and we'll be all set. Now that the install process is done, we have the IP address that we need to go to, followed by a temporary password. So let's go ahead and log in and check everything out on Pi-hole. And here we are on the homepage of our Pi server. We see all the different settings. Here we have the list of domains that the Stephen Blacklist is currently blocking. As of right now, we don't have any clients for our Pi-hole server, but let's go ahead and change that. And let's add our Kali Linux to our list of clients on our Pi-hole server. So to have the Pi-hole server start monitoring the traffic of our Kali Linux machine, we have to do two things. First, as you can see here, we're adding our Kali Linux IP address to our list of clients. But that's not the only thing we have to do. We have to switch over to our Kali Linux machine and have our Pi-hole server act as our DNS server. So let's switch over to our Kali Linux machine now and make that change. And by entering the following command on the screen, we're able to go ahead and edit our DNS settings for our Kali Linux machine. As you can see here, I went ahead and made that change. That top IP address, that's our Pi-hole server. So we've already made the appropriate changes. So let's switch back to our Pi-hole server and see if anything's changed. So here on our Pi-hole server, we see that it's already generating some traffic and we also have two clients. The traffic that it generated was me testing it out. I went to CNN.com just to see if we'll generate some traffic and it is. So let's go ahead and take a look at those clients that we have on Pi-hole. And as you can see here, we have two clients. We have our Pi-hole server itself and then we also have our Kali Linux machine. So we can add different lists to our Pi-hole machine. That way it blocks more domains. Let's go ahead and learn how to do that right now. So we're here on the big block list collection and I'll leave the link down below for this website so you can check it out yourselves. 
Before I dive in on how you can add your own list, one thing that you want to keep in mind, less is more. And what I mean by that is if you add a whole bunch of lists onto your Pi-hole server, you may come across problems like, for example, let's say you add 10 lists just for sake of argument, you may end up inadvertently affecting Amazon traffic. You may inadvertently not be able to shop on Amazon because the DNS, it's blocking all those requests. So remember, less is more when it comes to your Pi-hole server. As we scroll through, we see we have a whole bunch of lists for different types of categories. We have categories for advertising, tracking, the list goes on. This isn't the only site with lists that you can use for your Pi-hole server. I'm sure the more you look, the more lists you'll be able to find out there on the internet. But this is just the main one that I'm using for this example right here. The list you want to focus on are the ones that are in green, because those are the ones that are maintained regularly. So let's go ahead and let's copy and paste one of those lists and put it in our Pi-hole server. That way I can demonstrate to you how to add additional lists. So adding lists is really simple. Under group management, we're going to go to list and we're going to paste the link that we copied from that big list into our Pi-hole server right here. Then we're going to click add allow list. And as you can see here, that list is now on our Pi-hole server, but we're not done just yet. Under tools, we click update gravity and then we're gonna click update. And what that does is it's going to add that new list to our Pi hole server. And congratulations guys, you have your own ad blocker in your home network. Down in the comments below, let me know what kind of traffic it's stopping on your network. Like always, thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you on the next one.